circle, ellipse, parabola. We saw some interesting things about these conic sections earlier. But remember, there's one more conic section called the hyperbola. It looks like two parabolas which are mirror images of each other. But that's not the case. A hyperbola is very different from a parabola. Similar to the other conic sections, it has many interesting properties. For example, the cooling towers of the power plants or the nuclear plants are hyperboloid in shape. But why? A cooling tower should be shaped such that first it's efficient in the heat removal process and second its structure should be able to withstand heavy wind pressure. Also third, constructing it should be cost effective that is, building it should require as less material as possible. Hyperboloid is the shape which fulfills all these criteria. It increases the cooling efficiency, has greater structural strength and requires minimum usage of material for construction. Another area where the hyperbolic shape occurs is the trajectory of comets. Some comets in our solar system follow an elliptical orbit around the Sun and they are permanently a part of our solar system. But a comet travelling at a very high velocity such that it can escape the Sun's gravitational pull follows a hyperbolic trajectory around the Sun. Such comets pass through our solar system only once. Isn't the hyperbola an interesting shape? Let's understand what exactly a hyperbola is. Consider two points on this plane. Let's denote these points as F1 and F2. Now consider points on the plane such that the difference of their distances from these two points is constant. What do we mean by this? Consider this point P. Let's say the difference of its distance from these two points is alpha. That is, PF1 minus PF2 is equal to alpha. One thing to note here is that by difference, we mean the absolute value of the difference. That is, distance to the further point minus the distance to the closer point. That's why the point P, we subtract its distance to the closer point, F2, from its distance to the farther point, F1. Now the question is, are there any other points the difference of whose distances from F1 and F2 is alpha? Yes, there are many such points. The collection of all such points is called a hyperbola. Consider this point Q on the hyperbola. The difference of its distances from the two fixed points will be equal to alpha. Since for the point Q, F2 is the farther point, the difference QF2 minus QF1 will be equal to alpha. Similarly, for this point R on the hyperbola, its distance RF1 minus RF2 will be equal to alpha. So a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane, the difference of whose distance from two fixed points in the plane is constant. By difference, we mean the distance to the farther point minus the distance to the closer point. These two fixed points together are called the foci of the hyperbola. Notice that unlike any other conic section, a hyperbola is made up of two curves which are mirror images of each other. Now here we took the constant difference to be alpha. If we take any other number as the constant difference, we will get different hyperbolas. Let's say we take the constant difference to be beta which is greater than alpha. Then we will get this hyperbola which is narrower than the previous one. If we take the constant difference to be gamma which is less than alpha, then we will get this hyperbola which is wider than the previous one. So we see that depending on the value of the constant, the hyperbola becomes narrower or wider. Now tell me, doesn't the definition of the hyperbola remind you of any other conic section? That's right, its definition is similar to that of ellipse. We know that an ellipse is a set of points, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points is constant. In the case of the ellipse, we consider the sum of distances, while in the case of the hyperbola, we consider the difference of the distances. So we see that their definitions are similar. Remember that for an ellipse, we saw what its center, its major axis, minor axis and so on really mean. 
Also, we saw the relation between the length of the major axis, the minor axis and the distance between the center and one of its foci. Such axes and the relations also exist for a hyperbola. We will look at it in detail in the next lesson. To stay updated and to keep learning such interesting things, do subscribe to our channel.